Today we're creating a lifting, peeling paper effect in Procreate and applying it to typeable text. We're only using one color outside of black and white for this, so please feel free to use any color you'd like for the background. I've listed the color I'll be using on screen along with my canvas specs, and let's begin. This week's tutorial is brought to you by Envato Elements, which is kind of like the Netflix of graphic design. They have tens of thousands of resources available to artists, including stock photos, presentation templates, audio tracks, logos, fonts, and my favorite, Procreate brushes. We're actually going to be using a set from their library for this week's tutorial, and they've generously offered every Tuesday subscribers with a 70% off coupon, which makes it less than $10 a month to try out. It's limited time though, so tap on the link in the video description to grab your coupon, and let's go download our brushes. Once you're logged into Envato Elements, up here in the search bar, just type in Super Shaders and search and then up here where you can browse by category tap on add-ons and it'll be the very first one the ship in the bottle and make sure it says for procreate over here so i'm going to download these install them and then i'll meet you back in procreate okay i've got my brand new canvas and the first thing we're going to do is add in a background texture so with those shader brushes loaded in i'm going to grab super shader number three i've got the color set to my kind of orangish pinkish peachy color and I'm just very, very lightly going to glide my stylus over the screen. So you can see it's kind of an inconsistent texture and you can also kind of notice the direction that I was painting in. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above that and I want this texture to be denser. I don't wanna to call too much attention to it, but I wanna make it more interesting than just a solid color. And I've got my brush size set to max for this. So since I went this way the first time, I'm going to just very lightly glide over it going from top to bottom this time. And you can see I've got a few inconsistent areas, so I'll just let it glide over those areas really softly to just add a little more density. But you can see I've got these little flecks poking through, which is the look that I'm going for. And I like keeping it on two separate layers. That way I can change my mind and adjust, but you can put it all on one layer if you'd like. So now we're going to add in our typable text. And if you've never used typable text before, I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description to a tutorial on how to do that. So I'm going to select white, so double tap where white is to select it. And then you're going to come over to the wrench, add category, and choose add text. And I like just writing it out with my stylus, but you can also type it out if you would like. So in order to use your stylus for this, you wanna make sure your cursor is all the way to the right, and then you can scribble your text out. And I'm just going to write, hey, and then it will become text. So now I need to change the properties of this. I need to change the font style. I want it to be all caps, and I wanna increase the spacing between my letters. In order to do that, you wanna double tap until your entire word is selected. And then down here, you're going to hit the double A icon and that will bring up your menu of choices. So I'm going to use a default font called Futura, and there's a few different styles of Futura listed. I'm going to use the bold style, and I want it to be all caps, so I'm going to toggle on the all caps. So I wanna move this down a little bit, so I'm just going to take my finger, grab inside the text box, and then I can move it. And I want to increase the size, so I'm gonna come up Let's see, if it starts going down to another line, you can just grab the node, the side node with your finger and pull it out. And now we can increase the size to one that we're comfortable with. I'm kind of like, I'm just gonna set this to 105 right here. And then the tracking is the universal space between your letters. So we're gonna increase this a little bit. I don't want it to get too crazy, but maybe 10% looks good. So I'll set that to 10% and then I'm going to hit done. Okay, now I'm going to center this up. Now we have our text all set, and you can see right here, when you have an A, that means it's still editable. I can re-tap on this, I can change whatever I want still. Whenever the A is right there, it means it's still editable. I don't need to edit this anymore, and because we're going to be warping it to create that peeling paper effect, we're going to rasterize it. So I can just tap on my little thumbnail and choose rasterize, and now these are shapes. They're no longer editable, so if I tap in here, I'm just getting the texture of the brush. I'm not able to select the text itself. Let me undo that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the warp shadow. So tap 
up on the layer thumbnail, choose select, make sure your settings match mine down here, otherwise this isn't going to work the same. Come back to your layers palette, create a brand new layer, change your color to black, so double tap where the black is to select true black, come back to your layers, tap on this layer thumbnail, and choose fill layer. Now we have our exact text, only now it's black instead of white. I'm going to drag the black text layer underneath the white text layer and we're going to warp it to create a shadow. So I'm not going to create a traditional shadow here because I know that I want this to be peeling paper. So the shadow is gonna look kind of funky, which is why we're going to warp it. So with the black layer selected, I'm going to select each individual letter and warp them separately. So a really easy way to do that is to hit your select icon. You gotta make sure you're on the right layer first. Hit the select icon and make sure freehand is selected. All this matches mine down here. And then draw around the H. So we're just selecting the H. And then I can hit the selection icon and down here, change this to warp. Now I'm going to pull the top right side of the H and the bottom right side of the H. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the left side. Pull that out. I'm not doing it too much. This is a very subtle thing because if it gets too exaggerated, it's not going to look as realistic. Push in the sides a bit. All right, now I can deselect just by hitting the selection icon. And there's our first shadow. Now we're going to adjust the E. So once again, selection, Freehand, select the E, select, make sure warp is selected. For the E, I'm going to pull this top right corner up a little bit, and then I'm going to pull the bottom corner out. I'm not going to do anything with this corner because I just don't want to have too many lifting pieces where it becomes less believable since I have all four on the H. And I'll pull this bottom part down just a little bit, tuck this up. So I get this nice little arc right here, and I don't want to do anything to the center. All right, deselect. Now we're going to do the Y. Select the Y, and I'm going to warp out this corner, this one. If you're doing a different word than me, you can just play around with it and see what you like best. My recommendation is to just be more subtle, like go more on the subtle side than the extreme side, and then you can get more extreme later. You can see that it's already beginning to work a little bit. So what I want to do is change the blend mode of the black layer to multiply. We're just going to have it interact with the color of the background a little more like a natural shadow would be. I'm going to reduce the opacity down to about, let's see, 40%. And I'm going to add a little bit of Gaussian blur to it so it looks more like a shadow because it's just way too crisp for me right now. So hit the magic wand, Gaussian blur, and I'm not going to go too far, like maybe 2%, 2 or 3%. I've got 2%. Okay, so just enough little blur so it looks more like a shadow. Next, we're going to start warping the, the letters themselves. And this is why we needed to rasterize it because editable text you wouldn't be able to do this with. They have to be shapes. So tap on the white layer. We're going to do the exact same thing. So select. We're going to start with the H first. So when you're deciding where you're going to warp your letters, you need to look at the decisions you made of your shadows. And if you have to take like real paper and look at where the shadow is hitting, then that can be really helpful too. So because my shadow is here, I know that this corner is going to be lifting up ever so slightly. So I can just grab this node and curl it up just a little bit. Same thing with this one. This one's lifting up this corner, which is casting a larger shadow behind it right there. So this corner, also going to warp up a little bit. This corner is going to stay closer to the shadow. This one's going to be further away since the shadow is cast longer. And then I'm going to pull this one up a little bit too. And there we go. There's our H. So you can already see it's becoming more effective. We're going to do the E next. Same steps, just a different layer. So this one, same thing. This corner is curling up a little bit. If you haven't used the warp tool before, it'll take maybe a couple tries, but it's pretty intuitive. So that's just a little bit. I'm not doing this extra corner. Leave that just like that. And now we're going to do the Y. This corner is lifting up this corner and just the bottom left corner. We've got one step left. So create a brand new layer. We're going to apply a clipping mask because we're going to apply some inner shadows to our letters to make it even more believable. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask. We're going to keep the black selected for this since we're drawing shadows. And I'm going to switch my brush to 
super shader number 17. And the size of this one is about 25%. So what we're going to do is look at where the curl is happening. And if you had real paper, where is that like bend happening where the paper is starting to lift up? And we're going to indicate where the bend is. So from this corner down to about here is where I see the bend. So that's too big of a brush. Let me reduce the size. 10%. So I'm just going to draw where that line is. Not too hard, just a soft line where that bend occurs. Same thing over here and then down here and then over here. I'm picturing this as kind of more like a curved bend down here. Okay, same thing with the E and then the Y. So we've got our bend lines in and because this brush is denser in the middle, it is naturally giving us a really good gradient. So when we blur this, it'll be even more effective. And I like zooming out quite a ways because it'll be easier to see when you get to a point where it's enough blur. So magic wand, Gaussian blur, and we'll just start dragging it up. So I am at 10% is feeling pretty good to me. Deselect. All right, so obviously this is way too dark right now. So all we're going to do is reduce the opacity. Let me move this over here so we can see it as it happens. Reduce the opacity until it starts feeling real. I'm gonna go up to 60%. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.